right. Well, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Jamie Holt, and I'm a Yurok tribal citizen, and I come from the village of Wichpus, or modernly known as Wichbeck. Um, 2022 marks the 24th year of uh, me with Yurok tribal fisheries. You have to excuse me, I'm a little nervous. I've actually never done a Zoom presentation, but um, so today we're just going to kind of cover the importance of salmon to not only Yurok people, but all people of the Klamath system. Um, we're going to touch a little bit on um, the health of our river, the, the way it is now, um, the way that we hope to see it, and the ways that we as Yurok people contribute, um, and the ways that science contributes. So um, I think I'm just going to roll right into it. Bear with me here. All right. Um, can you guys all see my screen? Because again, I cannot see you. So <laughs> yes, we can. Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. So I like to start with this picture. This picture was taken around the year 1900. This is the mouth of the river. Um, as you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, Orega still looks pretty similar. But the reason that I like to show this is, is this is an undammed system. And an undammed system was actually able to support a ship offshore. Um, you know, as many of you know, we are in hopes of some dam removal in our near to immediate future. Um, it's an amazing thing. Um, so, uh oh, hang on. Uh oh. Okay. I lost my screen. Okay. Darn it. I apologize, folks. Let's try this again. As you can see, I'm a little Zoom uh, inept, excuse me. You're doing great, thank you, Jamie. <laughs> All right, you guys are just seeing that screen. What I want you to see is a picture of Iron Gate Dam. We're getting there, folks, I'm sorry. Stop share. Let's try it again. All right, it says we're sharing and hopefully you guys are seeing Iron Gate Dam now. <laughs> yes, we are. Okay, well, this is hopefully one of the dams that's slated for removal in the near to immediate future. Um, kind of wanted to show you those pictures back to back, uh, just to realize that, you know, a wall is, is, you know, they're just not meant to be within our systems. So let's jump into what I do as a scientist. So, one of the things that we want to do within fishery science is in the springtime where we're at right now, juvenile salmon are starting to migrate out towards the ocean. So we want to know how fast are they getting to the ocean and are they healthy on their way to the ocean? So one of the ways that we do this is by catching them in this nice trap right here. This is actually known as a rotary screw trap. On the Klamath, there's actually eight different traps from Iron Gate to Witchbeck. And on the Trinity, there's six different traps. What we hope to catch in them is these guys. This guy is an Alevin or an Alvin. He is a juvenile Chinook salmon. He is on his way to the ocean. This guy is just born. You can see his little yolk sac still. So kind of hearkening back to Brian's video in the spawning grounds there. This is the outcome of the spawning grounds. So this guy's on his way to the ocean. As most of you know, studying life cycles of salmon, he will head to the ocean. He'll be out there for anywhere from two to four years and return, but he goes through a couple of stages on his way to the ocean. So this guy, you can see his yolk sacs a little more zipped up. And within a week, he becomes a whole fish. <laughs> so 
what we're looking for within our screw traps also is, is how fast are these guys growing? So as you can see, their rate of growth is pretty quick. We're also looking for any kind of external indicators of health. Just like us, when we get sick, you know, you might have a rash or something like that. We're looking for anything that, that, that on their insides that we can see on their outsides. Last year on the Klamath River, we actually seen an outbreak of sea shasta, which is a disease that affects these poor little guys. Now, on the Klamath River, we have three different species of salmon that live within our system. This guy is a Chinook salmon. This guy is a steelhead. These guys are all salmonids. This guy is also on his way to the ocean. <laughs> this guy is a steelhead a little bit bigger. Again, we're looking for growth rates. How fast are these guys growing? How fast are these guys moving? One of the important things to realize about movement within the river is flow is extremely important for these guys. So going back to dam removal, we're really hoping to see that these guys get some more water, some more sediment, some more everything to keep moving. So we also have coho salmon. There are very slight differences between these guys. That's one of the things that you kind of just learn as you go along. <clears throat> so the next slide, I'm sorry, I'm, I think I'm kind of reeling through these a little fast. <clears throat> this next slide you see, the top here is actually a brook trout. He's related to a steelhead, which is this guy. And then this guy at the very bottom is a coho. Again, very, very indistinct differences, but they all share the same river. So fish need to eat. <laughs> and one of the important things also to think about within dam removal is, one of the important things to think about within dam removal is, um, everything in our system needs to eat, including our cells. Um, fish eat bugs and fish also eat other fish. So let's kind of dive into fish food. Like I mentioned, <laughs> fish like to eat other fish. This is a steelhead actively eating a baby Chinook salmon. <laughs> Uh, so other fish and baby fish also eat different types of invertebrates that live on the bottom of our river. So again, to harken back to dam removal, one of the things that dams cause also besides lack of flow of water is lack of flow of sediment. Water moves sediment. All things that live within the water need sediment. These guys that you're seeing right here, this is a stonefly, a giant stonefly getting ready to emerge from his shell. You can see him getting ready to pop out right here. These guys, you can see him as he popped out. This is him whole, and this is a golden stonefly. Within the Klamath system, we have numerous bugs that call the bottom of our river home. Now, again, to talk about rocks and different types of sediment that need to move. These guys need different types of rocks. They need different types of flow to live within our river. The reason these guys are important and their place in the river is important is our fish need food and we need food. <laughs> so hopefully in the future with dam removal, we can see some scouring of the river, some movement of rock, some movement of sediment. Now, I know most of you guys have walked along the riverbeds and found these guys. Some of you guys have probably wondered what they are. Well, that's these guys after they crawl out of the river and pop on out. We have amazing evolutionary systems or, or life systems within our river, let's say. Everything has a cycle. Um, these guys can live on the bottom of the river anywhere from two to seven years as 
this stage. When they pop out at this stage, they live for one year, make more of themselves and drop off. It's really, really cool, I think, how mother nature provides for herself if allowed the regular, like if allowed to, to, to thrive. This is a mayfly. He's a super tiny form of food. Now, the reason I show a super tiny form of food is these big guys on my finger, it would be pretty hard for one of those baby salmon up here to eat one of those guys. So back to this tiny guy, because these tiny guys need food. These are juvenile salmon getting ready to out migrate. This picture is actually taken at the mouth of Capel Creek in the lower Klamath River. So we're in, this picture was taken in early to mid summer. So as these juveniles are making their way to the ocean, <clears throat> what we've seen in the recent past is we've seen massive temperature rises within the Klamath system. <clears throat> and what happens when the water temperature elevates, the fish slow down. So just like us in the summertime, when we wanna cool down and the river's hot, we head to the creek, right? Well, these guys do the same exact thing. So as I mentioned on that large trap that I showed, this guy, that's one way that we watch these baby salmon move. The next way that we watch these baby salmon move is we actually physically dive with them. So we wanna be hands off in the summertime. We don't wanna stress them out. We realize it's hot. You know, They're just trying to eat. They're just trying to get out of here. So what we still wanna do though is, is we still wanna see how healthy are you guys? How fast are you moving? So we go to the creek mouths and here we find them. Like I said, this is the mouth of Capel Creek. Some of you may have been there. The amazing thing about this picture to me is this picture is taken in about eight inches of water total. Now we're in about midsummer. The other thing that's happening within the system and within salmonids within our system is the babies are headed out. The adults are coming up. So just like us and just like the baby fish, they also want cold water. So at some points in time, everybody shares the nice cold creek. This is taken at the mouth of Bluff Creek. So the reason I like to show this picture is not only can you see the juvenile salmon that enjoy the creek mouth, which are right here, because again, everybody wants cold, clean water. You can also see the adults that are headed up the river to the spawning grounds. Now, as I mentioned before, this time of year, we're in midsummer right now with these photos. Um, we're just visually looking for health. You know, we just want to make sure that everybody's doing all right, but we also want to know what are the species that are there. So again, when we were looking at those pictures of the tiny babies, you can actually see just little different variations. Like this guy right here is a steelhead. And this guy right here is a salmon. One of the things that I've managed to do over my 20 plus years on the river is learn these things rather quickly. And <clears throat> The one thing that I like to see is that a lot of our youth and a lot of, uh, you know, our younger generation know the difference of these guys as they're swimming around. It's really cool. You guys are out there paying attention. I like it. <laughs> so, like I said, we're in midsummer. The adults are getting ready to head up to the spawning grounds. The juveniles are headed out to the ocean for the next two to four years. Within our, within my job, What's happening now is we're kind of shifting gears. Um, we're still looking at the health of the river. We're still looking at the health of the fish, but right now we want to look at the health of the adult fish. The babies are almost to the ocean. We know they're safe. They're going to make it, but the adults are right at the beginning of their journey. So now we need to check them out. So one of the ways that we do this, my crew and I, 
is we gill net for some salmon. Now, unlike with the juveniles where, you know, we just swam with them and we didn't really bother them, um, we actually have to harvest the adults to check them out. Um, and we'll get to that here in just a second as to why that's important. But, um, excuse me, <clears throat> scientifically, what we're doing now is, like I mentioned, gill netting. We're actively looking for any changes in the river. Um, you know, this time of year, we're in about late summertime right now, as most everybody knows. Uh, we see large algal blooms now, which are pretty new, um, especially the sizes that we have these days. Um, and that is also, let's talk back to dam removal. Let's talk back to flow impediment. Um, with more flow, some cooler temperatures, some more sediment moving, you know, we can't help but think that some of these algae blooms will kind of push out. Now, let's talk about why checking these adults is important. <clears throat> This picture was taken quite a while ago. This actually was taken in 2009. <clears throat> this is when Blue Creek, which is on the lower end of the Yurok Reservation, and is from the mouth of the Klamath, Blue Creek is the largest, is, is the nearest largest creek. It offers the most cold water, the closest to the ocean. So what we're seeing here is an actual pooling of salmon within the Blue Hole. Now, I want to talk about why this form of science is important. <clears throat> We're now shifting gears into a project that we call the Ick Project. <clears throat> Sorry, this is a sometimes a little hard to talk about, but so in 2002, the Klamath River experienced a massive adult salmon die-off. We've seen anywhere from 20 to 40,000 adult Chinook die within that year. Um, scientifically, it, it made us shift gears. Um, we needed to understand what was happening, why it was happening. So we needed to, how do we take steps to learn these things? So as I mentioned in 2002, We had a massive fish die off. That picture that I just showed you of swirling salmon. This location is literally yards away from that. We're years apart in these photos. But <clears throat> as you can see, this. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you can see, this massive die off of salmon here, um, this was caused by a disease called ick. In 2002, this disease thrived within our river to the point that, that this happened. Um, this was one of the major pushes towards dam removal talks and trying to make that a realistic goal. Um, you know, seeing something like this is, 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 is a reflection of lack of flow, lack of uh, quality of water. Um, and we need more flow. Uh, sorry. So let's look at this. This massive die off was caused by that tiny guy. This guy right here is the actual ick disease. It's the same ick. It's the same ick that you can actually get within your fish tank. So what happens with fish disease is um, just like within people, we pass it by coughing, you know, we push it forward to people. Fish disease is passed horizontally because they breathe this way. So as all those salmon piled into Blue Creek there, you know, a couple of sick fish showed up. Everybody wanted cold water, just like we've seen in those previous pictures. Everybody wants to be there. 
Now, just like we kind of seen with COVID, you know, you get in a small area, it passes really quickly. Same thing happened with ick there. What we're hoping to see in the future, if dam removal happens, and hopefully this is happening, you know, we won't see these things. This won't be a part of the future of our river. It will just be a thing of the past. So the importance of the importance of realizing, let's see, actually, we're just going to move on here. <laughs> Sorry. So scientifically, we are now in late summer. You know, the juveniles are in the ocean. The salmon are moving kind of past us. We've harvested ours, you know, we have uh, we filled our smokehouses and those kinds of things. We'll talk about the smokehouses and the importance of traditional food here in just a second. But uh, I just kind of want to finish out my year scientifically. So, like I said, in springtime, we were catching those tiny baby salmon headed out. You know, going into summertime, we're swimming with them, we're checking them out, we're making sure everybody's healthy. Now, one of the last parts of their journey is, like Brian's poem, is back to the spawning grounds. This is what I see when I go to the spawning grounds. Now, what I find really cool is these guys, salmon are just nothing but nourishment for the river, nourishment for the people of the river. They are amazing, amazing creatures. So what we're holding up here is this guy right here is a male salmon. This one right here is a female salmon. One of the ways that you can tell the differences between the sexes here is check out the, check out the girl. She actually used, used her tail just like a broom to build those reds that we were seeing on Brian's video within the spawning grounds there. So one of the important reasons that we want to go find these carcasses is, as tribal people, we have a quota of fish that we're allowed to catch each year. Sport fishermen are also given a quota of fish that they're allowed to catch each year. These numbers have to come from somewhere. So one of the things that I also like to mention to the youth is, is um, you don't have to get down and dirty within my job. You don't have to be out in the water touching fish all the time. If that's not your thing, that's fine. Um, we need statisticians. We need folks who write computer programs. We need all of that. Our fish need all of that. Our rivers need all of that. So just keep that in mind. So, when we're trying to obtain these numbers, this project that we're looking at right here is one of the ways that we do it. You know, we need to have a general idea how many salmon are returning to the river each year. So, <clears throat> now these guys are kind of small. I just like to show this guy because he's just a big old fella. Yep, you can see that the males get a nice big, they call it a kipe, a big old, big old nose on him, a big old hooked nose. <clears throat> now, what is also amazing about these guys is, is I mentioned before that salmon are almost nothing but pure nourishment, whether that's for our bodies, for the river, for their babies, for other critters that live all over the system. When I took this picture, I didn't even realize, but this guy right here is nourishing a lamprey right there. Someone's getting a little snack off of him. But the amazing thing about this photo to me is, is when salmon hit fresh water, they quit eating. Now, those babies that we seen earlier, they're hogging and down all the way to the ocean. That's their job until they come back is just to eat and grow big. So when they come back, all they want to do is get to the spawning grounds. You can see this white fungus, all of this right here. This is actually that fish reabsorbing his scales for nourishment. Like I mentioned before, not only is he nourishing us, some of those guys that were caught on the way up, you know, 
but he's nourishing himself with his own body. They're amazing creatures. So, like I mentioned before also, they're food for everybody. Their bones get picked clean out there. You know, this fish was at the bottom of the river, but something drug him out, put him on a rock, and had some dinner. So, as tribal people, as tribal people, salmon are an important food source to us. As Yurok people, it's our major food source. Um, so, speaking traditionally, one of the awesome things about my job is, is that those two things collide. Science and tradition collide daily. Um, if I can leave you guys with anything, it's to understand that native people, we were the first ichthyologists. We were the first, first fish scientists, you know? Um, the data sets that we're collecting now in numbers and in written form, we've had for thousands of years via oral stories, you know? Um, so, when the frogs start to chirp or when the frogs start to croak, the lamprey are returning. When the dogwoods start to bloom, the sturgeon are returning. Those are stories that we've had for thousands of years. We're now setting flow, temperature to those indicators. So like I said, we were those first things. So some of the importance of native food existence. This is me, lucky enough to be cutting up some fish and cooking it. And this is actually our traditional method of cooking fish. I'm sure some of you know this. We'll take a look at a, uh, at a stick real quick. So it's an actual redwood stick, like a little spear. The wonderful thing about redwood is it's naturally non-stick. That's why it's used. It's also packs light. So you can feed a lot of people on a minimal amount of sticks. <laughs> so, you know, traditionally, this was our major food source. And as Yurok people, this is why we were put on the Klamath River was to take care of these creatures. Um, I believe that we are making great strides in a good direction to take better care of these fish than they've been taking care of in years. I think this is just a beautiful shot. Most of you guys have probably seen fish hanging. But to sort of kind of wrap up my ramblings here, I think if we can take away anything, hopefully it's that. When I first started this job 24 years ago, um, you know, dam removal was, um, something that we almost thought was a pipe dream. So as we roll into a great possibility of these coming down, um, all I can say is, is, is dream big and work hard. All right, thank you so much, Jamie. Um, just checking to make sure I've got any questions, but I would like to just extend my immense um, gratitude, uh, Chikanique. Um, it's always a pleasure to work with you and we're happy to have you here with us at Save California Salmon today. Um, is there anything you would like to close out on before we go? We are trying to stick to the hour mark just because uh, we might have a few classes zooming in with us. No, not too much. Just, you know, thanks for the interest and, uh, you know, the. The more we learn, the more we learn, guys. Just keep, just keep learning. Yep. 